Hi, it's Brad from MJB Engineering. I've got another shaft repair video for you. And this one has had quite a few repairs before by other firms. So you've just looked at some photos of some spray welding that actually failed. That's the uh, void that's left after removing all of the spray welding. That's 3.75 mil deep. And that's deeper than any spray welding should be really carried out. I've got a powder that do 3 mil, but anything over that, there's no guarantees. But this shaft is scrapped without it. I've been told this shaft's been rewound, or this rotor has been rewound, along with the grinding head, um, three times in the last two years. So there's obviously something wrong here that's making bearings fail prematurely and damage the seats. So the machine in question is some sort of diamond grinding machine. I saw the wheels, they look like a coring drill. They're about 60, 80 mil long, coated with diamond on the outside. They sit on an arbor. The arbor's got a taper on it, and the taper goes into the opposite end of the shaft to the, what we're looking at at the minute. That groove there, obviously, is deeper than it should be, but it's right next to a circlet groove. This shaft is hollow, so that rules out any welding that involves a lot of heat. It's going to distort, it'll then be a pain in the ass trying to re-straighten it with heat or in the press. So spraying is the best option here. Um, like I say, the shaft scrap otherwise. So we're going to give it a go. We'll obviously have to mask that circuit groove, mask the rest of the, rest of the shaft. We're going to use Dichem Blue for this because it's nice and thin and uh, easy to remove after we've sprayed. You can see there's a lot of damage on the cage there of the rotor. This hasn't been well looked after when it's been removed multiple times. It's going through multiple hands, this motor, before it gets to me. It's going through the rewinders, it's going through a mechanical fitter, and then obviously it's the customer's machine. So everything I get is third hand information. The opposite end of the shaft, that's had a sleeve turned before. The sleeve's been turned to a good standard, but the sleeve has been put over a weld repair, and the weld repair is obviously TIG. It's not been done to a great standard. And what I suspect is the fact that this keeps getting rewound is that there's a bend in this shaft. And it's a hollow shaft, which makes it even worse. Um, obviously, this isn't a motor you can just go and replace off the shelf. This, this rotor is integral to the grinding head, um, the actual wheel head on the machine. So it's probably non-replaceable it's really wants a new shaft made i have recommended this to the customer and the customer is going to get it done fully hardened ground or machined properly as it should be but this is now stop gap measure to get them by in the meantime um, the shaft's being made it'll be put on the shelf and then once when this eventually does break again the new shaft is there ready to be finished or machined. The rotor pressed off this shaft straight onto the new shaft. I've also recommended they get a new arbor for the diamond and uh, they're going to harden and machine that and grind it as well. So in a minute, we're going to stick this on V-blocks and uh, give it a full inspection to figure out what's going on and why it keeps breaking. So in the video, I'm just explaining that at current, I don't have a fixed steady for this lathe. So a fixed steady would be ideal. We could stick it behind that bearing seat, you know, leave this end of the shaft free floating. Um, when we're spraying, we don't have to worry about any growth in the shaft, etc. So when I'm actually spraying this, I'm going to be continuously adjusting the tail stock because as the shaft heats up, it will expand and it will put a lot of pressure on that tail stock. And you can end up with a bit of distortion in the shaft, especially with a hollow shaft like this. Um, which I believe is for coolant to be pumped down to the cutting tool. Um, I was later told after I completed this job that the customer is wearing out the diamond cutting tools on one side only. So that sets alarm bells ringing. Some slight changes to the setup. I've added some more parallels to try and stop these V blocks from bloody moving. Um, I've put some uh, different oil on as well. Um, right. We're on zero, we're in the middle of the taper there. Let's turn this the best we can. Minus 28. Bit of a flat spot there, apparently. 
plus seven. So what's that mate? 30, my, that's 35 uh, temps of a millimetre. Just check, we go back down to roughly 28 and 30. There's probably still some movement in our setup. We're miles out. This is this is honestly running so far out. This taper, it's it's shocking. I don't know how they've been running a grinding operation with this. There's just nothing good about that, is there? Okay, I've now set up two clocks so that we can watch what both of them are doing. They're, they're fairly over top dead center. Uh, zero that one out. Right, so they're both zeroed. Right, plus 12 on the OD. Minus seven, minus eight. It's minus seven. So that's 19. So that's almost point two of a mil. On the OD. And let's have a look at the ID again. Minus three. Back up to near to zero. It's point three on the ID. What can Here we do? are, ready to start spraying. So I bring you back. We've taken it down to one mil above diameter. Um, this is still very hot, so we're going to let it cool. You can see we've managed to chip off the excess spray here. Um, we haven't quite taken this off yet. Um, that should polish off once we take a little bit more. This bit of the shaft was slightly smaller. Um, you can just about make out the circlet groove in there. Um, so that looks like the Dichem Blue is working. So we should now be 36, but as I say, we're quite hot. Um, so I'd expect it to be over, um, under once it cools down. So slightly over 36, I think. Yeah. Right, so the new FAG 6007. Um, we're in Korea now. Well, Korea's better than China, isn't it? Uh, right, let's see how this goes. Fucking hell, it's a tight fit even over the end of the shaft. I think we're going to have to polish the shaft. Is that much damage on this shaft? Fuck it, let's polish the shaft. Right, so I polished the shaft up. Still a little bit tight at the end, but it's nice and loose up here. And it's on that seat. That's going to be a nice fit when it's warmed up. Yeah, once we've warmed that bearing up, it's going to be a good fit. Like I say, there was a slight ramp at the start, but what where this bearing sits, we're bang on. So uh, this must sit up against circlip, and then just the cap of the, the grinding head or the motor end cap uh, must seal that in. So yeah, that's it. That's job done. I ain't doing no more on it.